Hey everyone, welcome to a new video here on the channel. This is going to be a new addition to the Sierra Chart playlist for uh, new and beginner users. Uh, I'm going to go over in this episode how you can adjust the chart scales, how you can set up your grid, and also how you can adjust your mouse uh, scroll wheel to change how you interact with the charts how you can expand and contract the charts horizontally and vertically also. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon so you don't miss any new content in the future. And let's get right into it. Hello traders, welcome to the video here. So we're gonna start uh, going over, like I said, I'm gonna cover three basic topics here today as far as the, uh, the charts. Let me actually just close this chart book just so we can uh, go back and open it. For those of you on the first video, I showed how to open a new chart book and open charts, but we'll just go again, go, go to file, open chart book, and this is the chart book I'm using for the examples. I called it esfutures.cht, which is the default Sierra extension for their chart books. And what you can see is we have a five minute chart for the Emini S&P futures. This is the uh, June contract for 2021 at the time of this uh, video. And so, as you can see, I like to keep my charts pretty clean. I never really use grids, but I know some of you might want to use grids. So the first thing we're going to talk about is going to be how to place grids. So if you're on the main Sierra chart window, you're going to be using the main menu. And again, we're working with a single chart now. In future videos, I'm going to talk about using multiple charts, how to detach charts to other monitors, etc. But for now, we're just working with one chart. So we're going to go up here to chart. And if you go down, you're going to see horizontal grid. So in this case, if you put, you can see you have region one through eight. This is always region one. This is like the main chart. If you put, uh, let's say you put a study like a cumulative delta or a MACD or something, then it's gonna come down here and then that'll be region two. You can move things to region one, but if you start putting studies or indicators in, you're gonna have different regions or you can even just put uh, different uh, program, different studies and stuff to gather data on different regions, even if, even if you have them invisible, etc. But this is region one. So if we go here to horizontal grid and you put region one, you can see that now you got a horizontal grid going. And in this case, if I change the scale, you can see how the grid, you start getting more lines as you expand more, and you pretty much get up to, um, you just start getting uh, lines adjusted here. If you wanna customize how much, how many grids you get, you go to chart, chart settings, and then you have this button here called scale. If you go to scale here, you can see where it says horizontal grid line increments. So if I put 0 0.5 and I hit OK, and I need to hit apply on Sierra, if you just hit OK, it's not going to do anything. I want to hit apply. And then now when I come back here, you can see that now I got grids every point and every half point and then i can just come back here scale i can just put zero again apply and now those lines come off but like i said as you zoom in more or zoom out more sierra is going to automatically adjust these grids if you want to use a vertical grid you go to chart vertical grid and there you have it. In this case, you might put vertical grid and nothing happens. That's because you need to go to chart, chart settings, and under the second tab, advanced settings two, 
you can see at the bottom here there's a thing called vertical grid lines you have to have it enabled if it's not enabled they disappear and so here you can see how it's set for days but if I go oh, sorry if I go and let's say I put I want vertical lines every hour I put hours apply and now you get vertical grids every hour etc and you can change it for days weeks bars uh, at the session start at the start of the trading day etc you got a lot of options here as far as your grids and then to turn them off just go to chart deselect vertical grid and on horizontal grid just come and click to deselect the one you have so that's the first thing you have as far as that Another thing quickly I want to talk about is see how I have my charts. I don't have any lock space here on the bottom uh, scale. Let me actually move myself away here. You can see I don't have anything locked here. But if you can see there's a thing here called lock fill space. So let's say I want my charts to just come up the way here and lock this space. I come here. I put lock fill space and now you can see I got a letter here and now as you can see if I move my scale it won't go past that point this is if you have like different uh, notes or uh, levels and things here and you don't want the chart to come all the way here and just cover everything you can lock in your space you can also right click here and you can see there's a thing called lock fill space with a check I can take that off and now you can see that the little L disappeared and now I can move this all the way. If I want to lock my space here, I can come right click, lock fill space, now I get an L and now you can see the chart disappears at that point. But I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to turn it off because I don't use that. Okay, now let's go to the next point which is the chart scaling so the scale for the um, at the bottom here if you just click on the time scale and just drag it you can see that you can just expand and contract this over here and uh, let me see something here as far as okay mm -hmm. okay yeah no it's not it's all set here to standard so yeah if I just click and drag here you can see I do that a lot of people especially if you're coming from like trading view you know on trading view if you roll your mouse scroll wheel you can expand and contract and this is something that I love and I always use but Sierra doesn't uh, have that by default the same with the um, the scale here um, I like to just click it and contract and expand and this is how TradingView works by standard so to do that first in this case on the vertical scale on the price you just right click it and you can see there's three options here interactive scale range scale move scale locked if you have it in range then that means you can just click it and contract and expand it. If you have it on move, it's locked. And if you click and move it, all it does is just move your chart up and down, but it doesn't expand or contract the scale. And if you have it locked, it's to stay in place. And it, the chart is not going to move vertically, even if you try to move it. So that's pretty much it for the three options you have here. I use it in range, but you know, it's up to each user how they want to use it. And now for entering the scales, you can see how if I start expanding, I start getting more and more uh, detailed scales. But let's say I want the chart to display more, um, more numbers than this, even if I'm not zoomed in. For that, I can access it two ways. I can go to chart, chart settings, and hit 
scale here and you can enter that or over here I can right click it and put scale settings and I come to the same menu over here this is what we talked about uh, the range it's uh, you can set it as automatic independent you can set a constant range you can set it to linear or logarithmic this settings I don't really mess around with but uh, the um, the horizontal grid we just talked about this before and this I really like scale increments if you have it set on zero it's just set on auto and that's where you if you expand or subtract it then that's how it's just gonna go up and down it's gonna show more scales the wider you have it or let's say over here for example as you know the ES moves in ticks of 0.25 point increments so what I like to do when I trade the ES is I like to have this at 0.25 on the scale increment so if I hit OK you can see now my scale automatically is going up in 25 cent increments so that's a pretty useful thing especially if you're zoomed into like a lower time frame where this is more expanded I just like to have it all my charts by default at 0.25 increments because that's how the ES moves that's like the smallest unit of increment that I'm gonna have of movement on the ES it'll vary by one market you trade but that's just a way for you to set the uh, increments you want to see on here for your charts and now the last thing I want to talk about as far as this is what we're going to talk about the scroll wheel so for this you go to chart you go to chart settings and you go to advanced settings number uh let me see which one was it uh let's see you go to global settings actually sorry it's not chart settings because this affects all charts you go to global settings general settings and then you go to general 2 under global general settings and you see here it says scroll wheel and so you can see you have several options you can put that the scroll wheel doesn't do anything or in my case I have it set that the scroll wheel changes spacing and with shift it scrolls chart apply so that means if I take my mouse and I move my wheel it's gonna expand and contract my chart if I press shift on my keyboard and I scroll is gonna move the chart left to right so this is useful if you want to just have a small precise movement you can use that and as soon as I let go of the shift it just goes back to zooming in and out we can go back global settings general general 2 and then you can see you can play around with different things scroll wheel scrolls vertical scale and with shift it scrolls chart so if you go with that and I go here you can see that now with the scroll wheel I can just move the vertical scale up or down even if I'm in any place on the chart that I click if I just use the scroll wheel it just goes up and down if I press shift it goes left to right if I let it go up and down okay so you can just go to general settings the general 2 tab and just play here with the scroll wheel settings and just find out which one works best for you but like I said I have it so I can just expand and contract the chart uh, horizontally and if I press shift I just move it side by side okay so that's pretty much it for this video guys these are four quick options that are very useful and a lot of new people that come to Sierra might be a little rattled and try to find out because like I said if you're migrating to Sierra from a platform like TradingView that's sort of a lot more simpler with less options it might be a little bit overwhelming but these are ways for you to just get the basic functions that you might be used to 
or you know you can just find new cool ways that are helpful to you to do things differently okay so with that i'll leave you guys thank you so much for watching again if this video has been helpful make sure to hit that subscribe hit that thumbs up you don't miss any new content and you can help support the channel so it keeps growing if you got any questions or requests for other things to cover in this sierra uh tips and guides videos just leave them down below okay i'll see you guys in the next one take care thank you